Businesses hold massive amounts of data on their operations, but that doesn't mean they're using all of it effectively. Eric Brynjolfsson, director of the MIT Center for Digital Business, argues we're only at the beginning of a trend in which businesses wring enormous productivity gains from existing data. Information technology allows fine-grained measurement, the capacity to run experiments, set those experiments up carefully with controls and compare results, all very rapidly and cheaply. He sat down with Technology Review to explain how companies as varied as Amazon and Haras are doing it. A lot of my research is around how information technology is affecting business and the economy. Um, I keep track of a lot of economic statistics, and as we all know, some of them have been pretty dismal recently. Um, the recession that we're going through is the worst out of the past 10. It's worse than anything we've seen since the Great Depression, um, and people are even calling it the Great Recession. But I think five years from now, people are going to be looking at this period and not just talking about the recession, but also calling it the Great Restructuring because companies are taking this opportunity to fundamentally change the way they organize their work and in particular the way they use information technology to do that. One of the manifestations of that is that we're seeing productivity growth is really uh, increasing quite rapidly. Um, although in the 70s and 80s and early 90s productivity grew fairly sluggishly, barely 1% per year, more recently uh, it's been growing much more rapidly. It, it started doubling uh, in about in the 1990s, and the, uh, the past decade has continued to grow strongly, up to about 3.6% in, uh, in the past year. Early on, there was this concern that all the computers that were available in American industry and offices weren't having a payoff. Now we're beginning to see the early stages of that payoff. Uh, there are those who, like Nick Carr and others, who um, feel that IT doesn't matter, that we've sort of reached a maturity stage. I went and looked at the data more closely, and my reading is that rather than reaching the peak and tapping out what we can do with technology, we're really still at the very early stages of that potential. One way to see that is if you look at the difference between leading firms and laggards in each industry. Working with Andrew McAfee, uh, we divided the U.S. economy into 62 industries, and um, in each industry, we compared the top quarter of the firms to the bottom quarter of the firms. And what we found was that over time, the gap between the leaders and the laggards, well, it was fairly steady for decades, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. But recently, the gap has grown much larger. And in particular, if you subdivide it into industries that are more IT intensive versus less IT intensive, most of the increase in the gap has occurred in those industries that use more IT. So that suggests to me that rather than settling into a state, a, a state of maturity, we are actually seeing a frontier opening up, and some firms are seizing that opportunity and pulling away. And furthermore, that that frontier is at a minimum strongly correlated with information technology. And my suspicion is that it's actually being caused by information technology and the way that companies are using technology to change their business processes and the way they innovate. When you go and look at the specific firms that are making, that are using information technology effectively, you see a number of common characteristics. Part of it is the way they organize work. In my book, Wired for Innovation, I describe seven practices of the digital organization that these companies have in common. Um, it doesn't mean that every company that is successful does all these things or, or vice versa, but it is a, a general pattern in the data. More recently, I've been looking at companies that are using IT to change the way they do innovation. And there are four practices, four ways of using information technology that are very common in those companies. Um, but at this point, it's only a leading, say, 5 or 10 percent of companies that have really been aggressive. Those four practices are improved measurement, greater use of field experimentation, more sharing of information, and fourthly, the replication of innovations and ideas throughout the organization. Each of these practices is amplified tremendously by information technology, not by 10 or 20 percent, but often by one or two orders of magnitude, being able to, for instance, gather billions of bits of data on customers and processes in a, in, in a way that you couldn't have done uh, just five or 10 years ago. 
Um, and as a re and not only are these, these, these innovation principles being improved by the use of information technology, but they also have a synergistic effect with one another. Uh, when you do experiments, it's more valuable if you can measure the results with more detail, and if you can then share the ideas that come out of that experiment with other people in the organization, and ultimately if you can replicate them to dozens, hundreds, or thousands of other locations by embedding them in software and systems. For example, one company that has really embraced this data-driven approach to innovation and decision-making is Harris. And it's not a coincidence that their CEO, Gary Loveman, was a PhD student here at MIT. Actually, we were students together at the same time. He went out to Harris, and the reason they hired him was not because he's an expert on casinos and gaming, which is their industry, but it's because he knows so much about how to use data and how to use analysis to understand customers, processes, employees, and the rest of the business. This data-driven approach has allowed Harrah's to move from being a third-tier gaming company to the largest one in the world, and more and more companies in that industry are beginning to adopt that approach. And ultimately, I think we'll see it in companies across the economy. One of the ways that Harris uses data is that every customer of Harris has a total rewards card that tracks all their interactions with the company. So whenever they use a slot machine or gamble at uh, blackjack or even get meals, that's recorded on their total rewards card. This gives Harris the opportunity to do experiments on their customers, and they have an experimental driven culture. These experiments might involve giving coupons for a free steak dinner or uh, in enticing people to stay an extra night or even sometimes when they see somebody's had a string of bad luck, uh, maybe doing something to cheer them up a little bit and see if that increases the probability that they remain a customer. Um, these are all hypotheses that they explore. The decisions are not made by uh, wise managers that understand the business and, and make all the decisions from on high. Rather, they're made by putting forward hypotheses and then running business experiments using the total rewards card and their data gathering capabilities to understand which of the promotions and practices actually pay off and which ones don't. That's a fundamentally different way of doing business than the old analyze and plan mentality that dominated the 20th century. So collectively, what I see is that we're at the early stages of a information-driven revolution that has the potential to continue increasing productivity and productivity growth for generations. In fact, we are so far uh, uh, short of the frontier of what even current technology can do that if we froze technology for the next decade, we could continue to make enormous progress just taking advantage of the, of the technologies that are available today. But of course, technology is not frozen. It's going to continue advancing, thanks to our friends in, in computer science and, and elsewhere in the economy. And so the task of managers and economists is to hold up our side of the bargain and work more aggressively to understand the practices that take advantage of those technologies and ultimately bring higher productivity growth and higher living standards to uh, the U.S. economy and the world economy as a whole.